Good morning. Welcome to those who are viewing at home this celebration of the Eucharist on Tuesday of the fifth week of Lent here at Mary, Mary Mother of the Church. Our celebrant is Father Kanapa. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we are in, in the week heading toward Holy Week, we seek the Lord's mercy and we ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. From out Hor, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole, and whoever, anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Let this be written for the generation to come, and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away, and you will look for me, 
but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning. I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not recognize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many in the parish are familiar with my voice, so imagine yourself at a parish event in which maybe I'm moving around the group or around different tables, and and you notice me, and I'm not that far, but I'm behind your back, and you hear these words from my voice. Well, it's been good to see you, my little cupcake. God bless you. Do you think you might like sit up and say, well, that was odd. And then you might turn around and see that I walk away from a middle-aged woman. And you might even have the gumption to say, Father. I say, what? Don't use that name. Why not? I heard her husband use the name. I'm like, uh, Father. That, that's, that's like a nickname, a, a word of endearment. You, you just don't use that name. Imagine in today's gospel what it was like to have Jesus say these words. That it is, for if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. And when he says, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am. These are the famous words, I am who am, when God revealed his personal name at the burning bush to Moses. It's the word Yahweh. And nobody said those words. If somebody said Yahweh out loud, even today among the most devout Orthodox Jews, you do not say that word. That is a personal, intimate word that should not be spoken. How dare you? And yet Jesus uses that word of himself. And so we hear, like, the first lesson in today's gospel is Jesus is saying, I am divine. I am God, the Son of the Father. We also hear a second theme in this reading, and it has to do with death. Jesus says, I am going away, and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. And they do pick up, they're like, is he going to kill himself? This theme of death. But Jesus talks about how when you lift up the Son of Man, lift up as on the cross. Jesus is thinking about his death not to kill himself, but to fulfill the Father's will. And this is tied to our first reading today, 
in which we hear about the people and all of their sin and these poisonous serpents come and they start biting them and they start dying in their sins. And their remedy, as they say to Moses, help us talk to God on our behalf. And God says, make a bronze serpent, just like these ones running around, mounted on a pole. And anyone who looks at it is going to be remedied and healed immediately. It's an interesting remedy. It is not like those running around because the bronze serpent doesn't have any poison, any venom in it. And yet, this somehow is tied to Jesus, who though we are sinners and we might die in our sin, we are to look at the one who is lifted up, who has no venom, no sin, no wickedness, nothing to harm us. And Jesus says that when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize the I am. I am divine. I am the innocent one who comes to save. And if you believe in the one that you look upon, you shall be saved. This, as we begin the days to approach Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, is an opportunity for us to look upon a cross. And at this Mass, after communion, it will focus on the cross. To look upon the innocent one who's the Son of God. And yet he laid down his life. This is love. And if we look upon love, the love of God, and it doesn't transform us, that is where Jesus says, then you will die in your sin. It's not what he wants. It's not why he came. He came to save. And then perhaps, as we look at that love renewing us, We can use words that other people might think are kind of corny, like I use the phrase like little cupcake, that we might say, I am a daughter of God. I am the son of God. Like the son? I am the daughter of God. I am his precious one. I'm his little cupcake. And maybe we even dare to say the word Father, as in Abba, Dad, Daddy. At least in the quiet intimacy of our hearts, when we're allowed to speak one-on-one as a beautiful intimacy that can happen between husband and wife, let us believe in the one who sent us, the Lord Jesus, that he is divine, and that he is available for each one of us. And now we lift up our prayers of petition that the church may continue to be purified and sanctified through the grace and mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, That those who have turned from God may receive from him the grace of conversion. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are serving the sick, especially those in health care who are coming in contact with those with those suffering with COVID-19, for their safety, and for God's blessing upon them and their families, let us pray to the Lord that the grace would come to us to look at the crucifix in our homes, in the midst of our isolation, to see the love of God for each of us as individuals, and to receive that grace of peace and comfort and ourselves being lifted up. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that all who have died may be united with Christ in heaven, remembering especially 
Jerry Sokolik, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, hear and graciously accept the prayers we offer you, we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wonder, wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your good. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, 
handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints, in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation. We shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. In your prayer today, enjoy whatever terms of endearment, whatever nickname that God himself may use to, for you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.